What happens when a prospect says your price is too high? You've gone all the way through the entire thing. You've met with them, you've talked about everything, and you're at the price and they say it's too high. We're gonna cover exactly what to do and how to actually close that last little step so you can get your client to sign with you. My name is Harrison Barron from growth-generators.com. We help MSPs with sales training and marketing. Before I get into today's video, I do wanna mention just one quick thing. I, I enjoy this, this one quick thing. Down below in the video description, there are tons of helpful links from helpful videos to helpful resources, a master class, all of that good stuff is down in the video description. All you gotta do is scroll down, you can go grab it. I would highly, highly recommend going and checking that out. Otherwise, if you want, and you don't wanna go down to the video description, you can go to growth-generators.com. So let's talk about what happens when the client says your prices are too high, and we have my fake movie here, or movie money here, but the, the problem is, is you've gone through this process. You've worked so hard. You've made the sales calls, you've made the networking connections, you've gone through and done everything that you really are supposed to do. However you got that lead, maybe you got that lead through an ad and you go and you meet with them, you do a nice consultation, which is exactly what you should be doing. You see what they have and you're like, wow, this would be a perfect client. And regardless of what you're charging and the client, you, you get all fired up, you deliver the proposal and the client goes, whoa, that's a lot of money. That's, you are 50%, 70%, 100% more than the next competitor. Now, there are a couple things that you can do in this moment. One, leave. You can just leave the meeting, right? I know it sounds ridiculous, but I, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't seen it myself. People just hang up the phone, they get off Zoom, whatever it might be. They're afraid of dealing with that confrontation. Well, I do not recommend that, by the way, but it is a real, real thing. Number two is you start backing into a corner of, well, you know, our prices, this is why, you know, and we work really hard and you don't really understand how to address it. And you start kind of, you get uneasy, you feel weird and you're kind of trying to fight because you want that deal, but you don't really know exactly what to say. And usually you end up fumbling and losing that deal anyway, or you really don't have a way to portray the confidence that you should have about your price and why the price is the price. And you end up getting a little weird and that's option two. And you end up losing the deal. They say, no way signing with the next guy and calling it a day. Now, before I get into option three, I just want to take a second to one, invite you to hit the like button and that subscribe button, but two, Think about when you drive around, right? At least here in the United States, there are a ton of cars, just as there are in the rest of the world. There's a lot of different car brands. You have car brands that are fairly cheap and car brands that are expensive, and then you have car brands that are absurdly expensive, right? A nice Toyota, a nice Honda is kind of in there. You might have a Hyundai, a Nissan, cheaper cars, but then you have the more luxury versions of those cars, which usually don't do much, if not anything extra. You have Acura, you have Lexus, you have Range Rover, you have all of these luxury brands in there. And then obviously the stuff that's ultra high end, we're not going to get into that right now, but there's usually a different in, difference in price. A Toyota is usually about three quarters to half the price of a Lexus, depending on which car and which model you're going after. Otherwise it could be even 20, it could be 25% of that price. But when you look around, you still see people driving BMWs and Lexuses and these other, you have Infinities, all these other luxury cars. So people are not necessarily against spending the extra money. It's how you actually address that problem. And this brings me to option three, which is going about it in the right way. Now, most of the time, especially if you're a good MSP, you're probably going to be coming into an environment where there's an incumbent, right? There's somebody that's already there. It's a very different conversation with somebody that's new. And I'll cover a little bit of that towards the end of this video. But most of the time, if you're going in and they're saying, wow, that's a really expensive price. First, take a deep breath, right? I, you'll hear me say it a million times. I love a water bottle. A water bottle will save you a million times over. They ask you, hey, can you explain the price to me? Or your prices are really high. Hold on. 
and I just spilt a little on me as I take a sip, but it gives you a second to gather your thoughts. And that's really important. And the first is you want to be transparent. And when I, what I mean by transparent is explain to them your pricing and how you arrived to that number. And I think it's really, really important to go through that price because the price is the price. There's it's how you actually get there and the value stack. When you go buy a luxury car, it usually comes with leather, better rims, better brakes, better suspension, maybe a little bit more technology. But for the most part, they both do the exact same thing, whether it's a Lexus or a Toyota. And you want to go through that process of explaining how you got to that price. We use better tools. We have better technicians. We have better security measures that end up going into that. And here's why. We do this. We do this. We do this. And before you say our prices are too high, you might have to sit back and say, let's compare apples to apples here. And I don't want to ask intentionally what are the other people charging, but we do a lot as kind of our basic service. A lot goes into that. It's not the other way around when you go through this process. It's not, well, you're just getting support and agent and antivirus. There's more that you're going to be doing. You might be putting on Huntress. You might be doing backup. You might have better technicians that are proven to close tickets faster. You might have custom solutions built into that. And you have to compare apples to apples. And if you're really that good of an MSP and you're charging a good bit more money, more than likely you're doing way more than the competition is, right? At the end of the day, is the client getting help to support? Absolutely. But with your solution, they're getting so much more. And you have to compare that for the customer because you might not be comparing apples to apples. You might be comparing apples to oranges, as I'm sure you've probably heard that term in the past. This is tremendously important. And telling and explaining why your price is the price doesn't mean you're going to drop it and doesn't mean you're going to lose the deal, but there is so much more value in that additional offer. Anybody can offer tech support, just basic tech support, antivirus and agent on the computer for 50, 70 bucks a month. Yeah, they're not going to make much money on there and the client is never going to know the difference. But until they get hacked and they didn't put the right processes in place or something happens and they lose data, they're never going to understand the value that you're going to actually be providing. And this is why it's incredibly important to explain how you get to the price and then not only how you get to the price, but compare it to what everyone else is actually offering. Because I'd almost be willing to bet that you're probably offering a significant more value for your actual price. Now, the second part of this is actually going through and highlighting the value of it and the benefits that come with this. Now, how do we actually do this? We can't just always talk about, well, we, we offer the best this, we have the best tools, we have the best technicians. There's more that has to go into this. And this is social proof. Now I had somebody comment and say, well, social proof doesn't really matter. Trust me, it does matter. If it didn't matter, you wouldn't have Yelp. Okay. You wouldn't have Google my business. People love reviews. People love to see what else is going on. And an easy way to show your value is case studies and success stories especially if you're charging a premium and there's maybe some healthy profit, spend some of that and do a really good case study or grab a success story, a testimonial, if you will, to get that information. And then when you go to close, maybe they give you a little bit of pushback. Hey, I know you're giving us a little bit of pushback on price. I just, before we go any further and before you make a decision, let me just share a couple of case studies. Now, if it's your first client, it's going to be a little bit more challenging, no doubt about it. I promise you over time, it'll get easier and easier as you get more clients. But having a other person who is not you or somebody associated with your company, giving a testimonial or case study, if you're worried or curious to know how to do this, we all have these little devices here. You're going to take it, set it up on a tripod, and you're going to video that person. Say, hey, can you give me a one or two or three minute testimonial? Just talk about what you love, how we did a good job for your business, and how it changed your business. Sound fair enough? Hit record. 
get it, and keep it raw. You don't have to go back and make it all fancy. You can send these out. You can chop it up if you really want to, but the rawness, the authenticity of it is infinitely better. And creating case studies, if the customer doesn't want to be recorded with this, is going to be tremendous. And the bigger you are and the more you grow, the more case studies you're and you're going to end up having, which is only going to help push the value that you provide even further ahead than the competition. Yes, is the client going to buy partially based on price? Of course it is, but there's plenty of people that buy Lexuses, BMWs, Infinities, Acuras out on the road today. There is plenty of room for you to have a premium price tag and still sell it. Now, let's talk about the last and most important thing, which is addressing the common concerns. And this goes with a good and solid sales process. But when you go through this, you want to highlight the value, but more importantly, you want to highlight the benefits that come with your services. And a lot of people don't fully understand the benefits. Now, let's rewind a little bit. Steve Jobs, back in the day, when he released the first iPod, he said it was a thousand songs or some similar number to that in your pocket, right? Right down there. That is so much more sexy than saying, well, it's 500 megs in your pocket. No, it's a thousand songs in your pocket. And that's the difference. It's highlighting the benefit. Nobody knows what 500 megs is. What are the benefits associated with your price tag that the business owner who is going to be ending up paying you thousands of dollars every single month, what are they going to get, right? People buy for four main reasons, pain in the pre pain in the present, pain in the future, pleasure in the present and pleasure in the future. You can play into at least one of those four in your value that you show and having and addressing. If you're going to send that proposal, have a common FAQ area the common questions we, they get and how you can answer it, especially if you're going to leave it as an electronic document. Allow them to go watch the videos in their own free time uh, when they're doing their assessment. Allow them to click and see, hey, you know what? These are common questions. Other people, we didn't even think about these questions and these guys are getting ahead of it. You are much, much, much better off addressing the elephant or elephants in the room when you can and as they come up than waiting and hoping the client never thinks about them. Because if they have to go back and look and sharpen up, I was hoping I had a pen here but sharpen up their pencil, that is something tremendous and give them assurance that, hey, yes, we are a little bit more expensive. That's how we are. We provide a premium service with premium tools, premium employees that makes for an incredible experience for somebody like yourself. You can go to somebody else. I don't know how they're running a business at $60, $70 a month for sure. That's 100%. But we treat our employees super fairly. We use incredible tools. Every single one that every single client that works with us that we partner up with because it is a partnership. I can confidently tell you go to bed every weekend. They sleep like babies, at least knowing that their technology is safe and secure. And if they decide to go on a family vacation, everyone in the office is going to work the way that they're supposed to work. And that is why we charge a bit of a premium because we go above and beyond to make sure it is a truly incredible experience for somebody like yourself. So I hope that helps in your video or better yet in your sales process and, and ask for the sale. I can't even tell you how many people send the proposal and then they just wait. Oh, I hope they're going to sign. Ask for the deal. Go through that process, explain the benefits, show the case studies, show the testimonials, and then say, hey, how about we do business together? How about we try this out and start a partnership together? Especially if it's somebody that you really want to work with. Asking for that sale is tremendous. And you'd be so surprised how many of your competitors literally never ask. And maybe it's the cheap guy that's actually asking for the sale and he's getting the deal. And it might not even be because of the price, but just because he asked. 
So I hope you guys found some value in this video. If you've made it this far, I hope you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, little notification bell. I love the heck out of you guys, and I will see you guys on the next one.